Okay, I'm going to go through a basic data analysis example using Python, and uh, here you can see that I'm uh, using a Jupyter Notebook. Um, the first thing we're going to need to do is, is import some uh, relevant libraries. So we're going to import NumPy, Pandas, uh, Matplotlib, so that we can uh, plot uh, some results as a histogram later. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and get data using the Pandas data reader. Okay, and then this last line that you'll see here is a magic function, so-called, uh, that is part of the Jupyter Notebook that's going to allow us to, to see the graph right in, uh, in the notebook. All right, so I'm going to run this cell, and to run cells in the Jupyter Notebook, uh, yeah, you can either click the uh, run cell button up here, or like I just did, I hit uh, shift and enter at the same time. Okay. All right. So once the uh, libraries are loaded, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get some data. So I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, data uh, from Amazon. So I'll be using the Pandas data reader. All right. And I'm going to use the get data function. All right. And uh, I'm going to get data from Google. Okay, so you can get data from a few different platforms. All right, I'm just going to use Google today. All right, and so uh, all it really needs is a symbol. Okay, and then it'll go in by default, get 10 years of uh, daily price changes uh, for Amazon. All right, but I'm just going to go back and get, say, the last year or so's worth of data. All right, so I'm going to go back to oops, August 3rd, 2016. Okay, so just like that, we have some data. And just to confirm that we have some data, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the first few rows using the head function. All right, so you can see uh, we get a pandas data frame. And uh, we're getting, yep, about a year's worth of data here. And uh, just what you would get if you were looking at, uh, you know, price history on, on Google Finance. All right. So all we're really interested here in for this example is the closing price. All right. So we're going to go ahead and calculate uh, the price change close to close. All right. To, so to start with, we're going to, uh, go ahead and get just that closing column all right from the Amazon data frame all right once again we'll just confirm that we got what we think we got using the head function okay and so you can see that okay well uh, we didn't actually get a a data frame here all right, we got uh, something else, and uh, I think if we go ahead and want to take a look at what we got, all right, we'll find out that it's a it's a panda series. All right, so what the data frame is actually is several uh, series stacked up against each other. Okay, all right, so not a big deal. All right, so I'm going to set a new variable equal to percent change. And uh, we're going to calculate that as an NP log of the Amazon close, all right, divided by, all right, the close of the next day. All right, I'm going to accomplish that using the pandas shift function that is part of both data frames and series. All right, so what this is going to do is shift forward uh, one day, all right, and then divide the previous close by that shift. All right, and if we want to, um, actually, after we're done with all that, we probably want to multiply it by 100. So we get a, a percent rather than a, a decimal. And, uh, and then like we've been doing, I'll go ahead and, and confirm that we got what we think we got. Okay. 
All right, so uh, we can see that, yep, uh, we have some kind of change. And if I look at the data, I can just kind of uh, visually confirm that it, it's sort of doing uh, what we think it's doing. All right, so uh, the first day we can get is 8.4, right? So there wasn't any, any data before that. So that's why we get uh, a, a, not a number here as a result. And we're going to have to kind of pay attention to that uh, as we do further analysis. All right, but for right now, uh, what we want to do is kind of confirm it's doing what we think it's doing. Um, and if we just kind of look at this, we can see that, okay, it went up around $6 and around $6 on a $750 stock is about 0.81% of a, a change, right? And this is an instantaneous rate of return, all right? So it's a, it's a compounding rate of return, okay? All right, so uh, we have the data that we want to work with. And so now what we're going to do is uh, maybe uh, look at some summary statistics there so we can see if there's uh, anything unusual going on in this data set, okay? So to do that, I'm going to, first of all, use the pandas described function, all right? And it's going to give us a nice little table of summary statistics. All right, and so uh, we can see from this that, okay, that we have 252 observations, all right, exactly a year's worth of data. All right, we can see that the average change is very close to zero. Uh, there's a standard deviation of a little over 1% here, 1.2%-ish. All right, the worst day that we had was a negative 5% change. Uh, the best day we had was uh, almost 4% change. All right, and then we can... Uh, we also get a couple of uh, we get a couple of uh, per, uh, percentiles in here, so we can see that okay, uh, you know, 75% of the days uh, the change was greater than negative half a percent. All right, and then uh, comparing the mean and the median, we can see that okay, uh, based on that, uh, they're pretty close to equal. We might suppose that this is uh, sort of normally distributed. All right, although uh, based on the min and the max it looks to be somewhat negatively skewed, all right? All right, so sort of an alternative to the uh, pandas described method that, that comes for series and data frames, uh, we can get use the uh, SciPy stats describe, all right? So uh, first we're going to have to import stats, all right? And then uh, uh, we're going to use a function of the same name there and we get a slightly different table all right uh, you know a couple of things that are missing uh, from from the uh, the pandas table is uh, is skewness uh, and kurtosis all right and so we're going to actually get those uh, from from the stats described all right what we don't get is a nice little table okay all right, and so I mentioned earlier that, okay, we had this not a number for the first row, all right, of data, all right, so since there was no uh, 8.2 here, we couldn't calculate uh, the percent change on 8.3, all right, and uh, the stats describe uh, doesn't deal with not a numbers, all right, so uh, it's basically a null value, pandas dealt with it just fine, all right, it just left it out. And uh, we're going to have to do something different to, to make SciPy work, okay? And so basically it's pretty easy with this data set, all right? We're just going to ask it to look at everything uh, from the first row on, all right? And when I run that, uh, we get, we get uh, some of the same numbers that we got before, all right? We don't get a pretty table, okay? But uh, we do get these added values of a... Uh, skewness and our kurtosis. So here we can see that negative skewness that I uh, mentioned earlier. All right, so uh, probably can't really assume that this is a normal distribution. All right, um, the kurtosis talks about uh, the basically the height and width of the distribution. Okay, so uh, a zero value here is going to be what we'd expect if the underlying data is drawn from. A, a normally distributed uh, population, all right? So we have uh, a kurtosis of 2.36, significantly higher than zero, 
uh, we would predict uh, that uh, that this is not drawn from a, a normally distributed uh, population. For comparison, I am going to generate some random numbers uh, that do come from a normally distributed population, and uh, I'm going to use uh, the the mean and standard deviation of of the Amazon percent change so we can kind of uh, directly compare these two things. Okay, so I'm going to call my variable x and I'm going to draw a sample from this np random, so numpy random normal. All right, and uh, the mean is going to be, you know, pretty close to the mean. I'm not going to get that overly concerned about uh, how close I am, so 1064, four decimals is pretty good. All right, I got the standard deviation up here, 1.1948. Okay, and then we had 252 observations, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, draw a sample of the same size, and then I'm going to use the stats describe on on this little data set. Okay, so when I do that, all right, we can see uh, the values here. All right, uh, skewness still looks a little bit negative, but it's pretty close to zero, all right? Again, kurtosis, not exactly zero, all right, but a lot closer uh, than what we got up above, all right? And so if I run this a few times, all right, I will, I will probably get, you know, slightly different numbers, but they're all going to hover with a kurtosis um, fairly close to zero, all right? Which is what we expect when we see a normal distribution. If we want to take this just a little bit farther, okay, we can use the kurtosis test uh, on both these data sets. All right, and uh, the kurtosis tests whether, or the kurtosis test tests whether or not this sample that we're looking at is uh, coming from a, a normally uh, distributed population. All right, and the null hypothesis is that yeah, the sample is drawn from a population where the underlying kurtosis is that of a, a normally distributed variable. Okay, so we're just going to kind of run this test. All right, and so for X, we can see that our test statistic, all right, we're calculating a Z here, all right, and this is a two-tailed test, all right, so we're looking for statistics that are significantly lower than zero or significantly higher than zero, all right. It's sometimes a little bit easier to just look at the p-value, all right, and the p-value associated with this test says that there's around a 73% chance that if we uh, reject the null, all right, we'll be rejecting a true null hypothesis, all right? Another way of sort of looking at that is saying, well, that variation that we see here, this kurtosis that is negative uh, 0.153, all right, pretty close to zero. Uh, basically, there's a 73% chance that we're just seeing, uh, you know, sampling error there, random chance, okay? Uh, by contrast, if we look at the kurtosis test for the Amazon uh, price changes, uh, we can see that uh, the test statistic is high, all right, so I said it should be significantly higher or lower than zero, all right, by that I mean if it's a Z, anything higher than 1.96 in this case um, is going to lead us to conclude that we're not seeing a kurtosis from a normal distribution. All right, and then looking at the p-value, it's 2.15 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, so basically 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 2. All right, so very low probability that we're seeing, uh, we're seeing uh, these kind of results from random chance. Okay, all right, so the last thing we're going to do here in our basic analysis of this stock price uh, is we're going to plot the uh, we're going to plot a histogram so we can actually kind of see the price changes all right and I've written a lot of this code ahead just to save some time all right but basically I'm using matplotlib all right in a couple of different ways all right I'm importing this library from it 
called uh, MLab, which emulates MATLAB. All right, so it has a bunch of functions that, if you're familiar with MATLAB, uh, they're very uh, comparable. All right, so we're going to use it later to overlay a, uh, a a normal curve on our histogram, so we can kind of see what the data would look like if it were normal, and then see how closely that that uh, fits the actual data. All right, all right. So down here, I've uh, you know calculated a few things so I can use it in that normal curve overlay. All right, and uh, I guess the only real uh, interesting thing here is that I have generated a, a small data set uh, using the MP uh, line space which basically is going to give us a hundred data points uh, between the the minimum and maximum change on Amazon and they're going to be equally spaced all right and then I'm just going to turn that into a plot uh, that uses the MLab uh, normal probability distribution Okay, so here's our histogram with our normal overlay, and uh, you can see that, okay, there's what they must be talking about with their kurtosis. It looks like uh, this sort of bin right here around zero somewhere, right, is uh, is happening a lot more than we would expect to see uh, if, if it was coming from a, a normally distributed population. All right, and then just go ahead and compare that one more time with the with the data that I drew from a normal distribution with the same kinds of parameters, uh, we can see that, okay, that data conforms much more closely to what we'd expect to see uh, if, if the uh, underlying population is normally distributed. Okay, so I hope that helps with uh, some basic data analysis using uh, Python.